Hi, I'm Charlie Clouser, and I'd like to show you a little bit about Hammers, the new sample library that I created in collaboration with the team at Spitfire Audio. A long time ago, I played keyboards in the band Nine Inch Nails, but since then, I've been composing scores for movies, most notably the uh, Saw horror movie franchise. So what I have here loaded up in my DAW is a cue from the latest movie in the series. This is the ninth Saw movie called Spiral from the Book of Saw starring Chris Rock, Sam Jackson, Max Minghella, and Marisol Nichols. And it came out in theaters uh, in May 2021, just a couple months ago. And the cue I'm going to show you uh, is a cue that I used the uh, percussion library hammers on quite a bit. And it formed the backbone of the action drums and even some of the synth pulse type moments through the quiet bits in the middle of the queue. It's about three minutes long and it starts off with a bit of epic action as the police cars come roaring up to the crime scene. Then there's a bit of uh, quiet tension and then uh, a longer action sequence in the back half of the queue where sort of action strings cut in and uh, then we have a variety of percussion accents and more linear parts as well all created using the Hammer sample library. So uh, I'm gonna let the cue roll down, and uh, after it finishes, then we'll uh, discuss how the elements work together and uh, how you can use some of these elements in a production of your own. There you have it. So now I'm going to break down uh, what components from Hammers I used uh, to create that rhythm bed and uh, how I reworked and manipulated some of the loop material as well to play the type of parts that I felt would fit best with the uh, underlying music. When I started this piece of music, the first thing I came up with was obviously the tempo and meter map and sort of inserted all my markers to determine where events would happen and where the big sections would be and so on. Uh, and then I laid in a very rough uh, idea for the rhythms just the, with the most basic pattern 
uh, just to give me something to play against as I uh, created all the string parts and all the brass swells and so on. Uh, then I spent way too much time working on those elements and then we'd go back to, to construct the rhythm track after the fact, after I kind of had the music sort of knocked into shape. Uh, and because of what the rest of the music is doing is really gonna dictate what parts would be appropriate for the uh, drums and percussion to be playing. In this beginning section, where the cops are rolling up to the, to the crime scene, and uh, there's sort of the epic brass progression, um, I used the, one of the first elements I laid down from Hammers was uh, some bits and pieces from the uh, Surdu's loop category. You know, those have a very earthy and wooden tone and are more in line with uh, sort of what you'd expect from uh, cinematic movie percussion type of thing. And, uh, but the, the loops weren't playing exactly the part that I wanted, that I felt would fit with the piece of music that I was writing. So all I did was I used one of the loops and added in a couple of extra hits from the end hits, which are included with all the loops. Every loop in Hammers starts with an eight bar phrase, which appears on the lowest key in each six key brick on the keyboard. Then the next four keys are each of the two bars that make up that eight bar loop. And the final key is just the end hit and ring out at the end of the loop. So it's a simple matter to take a part which might be close to what you, you want, but is sort of missing just one hit. So all I did and with these surdu loops was just add one strike on the end hit sample in between what the rest of the rhythm was playing. So instead of that, we wind up with very simple, but it created the, the desired result. And it winds up sounding like this when it's sequenced and played in time, unlike my manual keyboard playing. So just by adding that one extra end hit, I was able to change the pattern around and create the, the part that I wanted it to play. I also used a few of the reverse hits in all the loop banks. Those end hits are duplicated at the bottom of the keyboard and flipped backwards so that you can create sort of the epic suck in effect. And uh, it's very simple to use them. You just play that, play the desired either a loop or a single hit, and you can wind up with and I used a few of those sprinkled throughout to create sort of accent moments. And that works well uh, leading into a, a rhythmic section or just as a single accent moment like that. You know, when, you're, when you have a wide variety of, of percussion loops laid out across the keyboard, some of them uh, can be used to create fills sort of on the fly. Uh, there's a few, for instance, in this Surdu bank, there's a few uh, patterns which start with a double hit like this. And it's a simple matter to use those to build a fill by uh, just re-triggering those components, maybe with an end hit, uh, to get something like this. Or... So I was using those uh, double hits at the beginning of these loops higher up on the keyboard to create additional fills throughout the rhythm pattern as the cue developed. After I got the surdus kind of doing what I wanted them to do, then uh, I layered in uh, some of the rototom loops which have a brash and, and harsh sound and are a nice contrast to those uh, sort of woody, earthy surdu drums. And they really add a, a much more aggressive tone to the final drum mix when everything's all together. Uh, and I did the same kind of thing where I added a couple extra hits and a couple of extra bits and pieces from other loops that weren't the primary loop I was using uh, to create a final pattern that wasn't really the same as the, what the source material was. And that wound up sounding like this. Then I felt I needed uh, a little bit of a sort of a higher frequency percussion, something that, that was almost like a hi-hat part or a shaker part. And uh, for that, I used some loops from the Darbukas section, which were recorded originally by playing with wire brushes on the rims of the Darbukas. And they don't really sound even much like a drum, 
but uh, they have a great texture that helps to propel the cue along and it's fast and rapid without taking up too much space. And they sound like this. When you layer those behind the bigger drums, uh, it's a nice ensemble feel that really has a forward motion and a, and a sort of an action movie feel. But I wasn't done yet. I knew I wanted to add in some single hit performances over top of these loop elements to just add a little more personality and a little more individuality and of course some fills to accent what was going on. And so for that I used the, the Surdu's single hits, which sound like this. as well as the Tom's four player ensemble, which is four arms, four sticks, four drums all at once. As well as uh, the Roto Tom solo articulation, which is just one arm, one stick, one drum, but again, has a, the, that brash slack tuned Roto Tom sound that in the room I record these in really has an aggressive feel. And so I added those single hits on top of those manipulated loop components, and this is what we wound up with for the beginning of the cue. So that was a nice start but uh, obviously we weren't done yet. The next section of the cue had to have a, everything had to come down in energy and have a sort of a tension pulse where normally you might use a, a synthesizer or a, you know, an arpeggiated pattern uh, to just create a, a, a gentle low frequency pulse. And I was able to go into the warp section where the warp section in Hammers is based on the original recordings from the loops section, but processed in ungodly amounts, sometimes using uh, the modular synth rig behind me, sometimes using uh, my collection of hardware outboard, items like the Eventide H9000, and of course, some of the 1200 or so plugins that are installed on my system. Although you, it might not be apparent at first, even the scrap metal loops, which start out sounding sort of like this, when you go to the scrap metal warp section, some of the processing takes those, even those high frequency chinky chinky sounds down into much lower registers where they've been pitch shifted down and distorted and compressed and filtered and distorted again. And you wind up with sounds that uh, do almost sound like a, a synth bass line type of effect. And that sort of winds up sounding like this. And that actually started out as a recording that sounded very much like this. And after, if you manipulate it enough, you can force it down into uh, the, under, the underworld, as we're hearing there. So that sound from the Warps collection created the, the basis for the, the quiet section through the middle of the cue, with some accents that I was adding from some of the frame drum loops, which again, heavily processed, and those were used to create a sort of a, a rattlesnake-like accent that uh, sounds like this. All I did there was use a little of CC11 to fade it out so that the loop starts and then fades out gently. I added a little bit of ping pong delay uh, in, in the mixer in Logic and it was a done deal. In addition, I had a few accents besides those frame drums that came from the scrap metal warps some of which were played in reverse, and those wound up sounding really cool and had a nice contrast to these other uh, frame drum accents that I put in. The scrap metal warps reversed sound like this. Again, with a little bit of echo on it to just kind of make it dance around in the stereo field a little bit. As we work our way towards the action and tension sequence towards the end, I just did a little bit of a build by adding one final Darbuka warp loop 
And that whole combination of quiet stuff through that middle section has a, almost an electronic synthetic feel, even though it was completely based on acoustic recordings that, of course, were heavily processed through the warps, as, as you'll find in, in Hammers. Then the cue takes on a slightly different personality for the second half, and things do get uh, a little bit hot and heavy. Some really aggressive string patterns come in, and the drums aren't playing so much of a linear pattern. The big drums are kind of playing accent strikes to, to hit certain cuts and certain moments in the, in the action. Especially there's one moment where Sam Jackson rolls up on the scene and he's furious at these cops who didn't do enough to save Chris Rock's character, and he does this thing with his finger, and the drums hit that exactly, which I'm quite proud of, although it was probably totally unnecessary, uh, but it was fun. As the action sequence towards the end is developing, as a bed I created, I used a couple of those Darbuka brushes on the rims kind of loops to create that linear, almost hi-hat kind of feel, and that sounds like this. versions of the loop that come in and out and change as the sections of the music come in and out. There's that one. Then there's a slightly thinner one. By just adjusting the MIDI note velocities, that was how I was able to make some sections louder or quieter than others uh, without even bothering to use automation in Logic. Um, also, as accents throughout that whole ending build sequence, one trick that I keep falling back on and I love to do, which is there were specific recordings that we made for hammers, which are on the scrap metals, playing a decrescendo of 16th notes. So just kind of going ding, 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 Because when that is reversed, it creates a sucking up kind of effect. The end result sounds like this. And I've put a little ping pong echo on it so that it bounces around in the speakers a little bit, but that's a great accent and those, parts, you know, if you're just listening to the scrap metal loop section, you might say, what is this weird little decrescendo? How would I use that? Well, use it backwards and you'll see. So the whole back half of the, of the cue is really all about those linear elements from the Darbuka rim loops, creating this, this percussive linear kind of bed. The backwards metal accents highlighting certain moments and certain action on screen. And then the big drums, both the surdus, uh, the roto toms, and I added a layer of the toms, which is the big four player ensemble. So that's four floor toms being played at once. And again, I manipulated uh, by using bits and pieces of different loops, I was able to get them to play exactly the pattern that I wanted. As I showed before, taking some patterns which have a double hit and using that those pieces in conjunction with an end hit to create a fill or an accent that was very different to just triggering the loop and letting it roll. And that would sound like this. As we get sort of towards the end of the cue as that big action sequence uh, takes shape, then I was using those linear elements from the Darbuka loops with the brushes on the rims of the Darbukas, those backwards metal snippets to create accent moments and the rattlesnake kind of percussion effect. And then I was using not only the surdu loops and rototom loops, but chopped and rearranged by triggering different pieces. But also I brought in the tom loop section from Hammers, which is the four player ensemble, which is four floor toms, four arms and four sticks all at once. And they have a truly massive sound. Uh, and much like the uh, surdu loops, I was taking bits and pieces from one loop and re-triggering them along with the end hits to create fills and different accents that weren't included in the original loop material. And sometimes that can sound like this. So by, after a long night of manipulating those snippets, then I was able to create this rhythm bed that forms the backbone of the back half of the cue and all together winds up sounding like this. So 
So none of those actual parts are present in the loops, but by manipulating and re-triggering the various chunks, you can create the type of performance that will fit with whatever piece of music you're writing. And that's what I did here. A little later on, it becomes more linear and some of the loops do play on, but with additional hits inserted using the end hits which have a nice long ring out so you can trigger them at any time without worrying that you're starting into a loop and something else is gonna happen after you hold down the key. And as that starts to take shape, it winds up sounding like this. At the very end, uh, just in the sort of end, final end run, I did add some performances on single hits of the Darbukas, playing almost a, a world percussion feel. They have a very organic and you know Middle Eastern feel to some of these sounds. And I recorded just very quickly from. Uh, from the drum pad here, about 16 bars. It just helps us build the cue to the final ending hit. And by itself, those little darbukas sound like this. But over top of the rest of the drums and the music, it just adds another level of energy as we're approaching the end. So that's, in a nutshell, how I use the elements from Hammers to uh, help to create this bombastic rhythm track underneath this cue, which was towards the end of the movie and really needed to, to bring the pain. And uh, I hope you'll find that uh, Hammers is as flexible in your applications as it has been in mine, because uh, I'm having a great time with it. Thanks for watching.